This is Chris from the Free Library Springfield Township. We're here to make frost in a jar. The things that you need today are salt, a mason jar that's going to have a lid, some blue food coloring, and a little bowl that you can put the food coloring in with some water. What we do today is you're going to take ice and crush it up and you need to fill your mason jar three quarters of the way full with ice like I've done here. What we're going to do then is we're going to take our salt and we're going to put about a half an inch of salt on top of the jar of ice, okay? Let's go ahead and pour it in. Make sure you cover all your ice. Let's see, have I done about, no, we need some more salt. There we go, that's, a little more can't hurt anybody. So there's about a half an inch of salt. Now we're gonna take, like I said, it's a little bit of blue food coloring and some water, and we're gonna pour it in on top of the ice. And now we're gonna put our lid on, and we're gonna watch science happen. Okay, whoop, now we're gonna watch all that go down. Science that we're seeing today is all about frost. And the idea about frost is that air has water particles that are known as water vapors. Water vapors are what clouds are made of. The cold air can't hold as much water as water does. And so when air cools, water vapors cling to surfaces. And when the surface freezes, that creates condensation. You've all seen condensation outside when it starts to get cool, you'll start to see things get moist and wet, but when the surface gets really cold, then it starts to freeze and that becomes frost. And frost is just a thin layer of ice as things get cold. So when the water vapor becomes freezing and that surface becomes ice, that's when we get these thin layers of crystal known as frost. So, Can actually give this jar a little bit of a shake and so we're going to start to see the frost form in here and part of it is that because the salt is lowering the melting point of the ice and it starts to freeze because the temperatures are going lower and because the the um, jar is becoming cooler. Can we start to see any of the ice crystals form? Sometimes this can take up to a couple of minutes, but the ice water causes the jar to hover right about freezing. And so it gets cold enough that the condensation will happen, but not frost. And the frost forms because of the salt and the salt lowers the melting temperature of the ice, and then the ice will start to freeze. What are we doing? Are you starting to see any? By putting the lid on, you're keeping all of that air trapped inside. If you were to do it without the lid, it will take longer because you are letting more air into the jar. When the glass freezes, that's helping the condensation turn to frost. I actually mm -hmm. start to see some of the frost there on the side of the jar. Why don't you look at it over here. Things you can do about this experiment, you can try different variations in it. You can try the amount of salt that you put in. You can try other kinds of frozen liquids and supposed to ice in water. You could add a little, we added a little bit of water when we did the blue food coloring. Um, you can try um, shaking the jar more. You can try not shaking the jar at all. I gave it a little bit of a shake. Um, you could try the amount of ice that you put in. 
Uh, yes, we'd filled the jar three quarters of the way filled, try it only half filled with more ice, or more salt or less salt and see how that changes the equation and how much it forms its frost. But I think we actually got, you can see here, we actually have some frost crystals there growing on the side of the jar. If you've ever made homemade ice cream, you always put salt on the ice as you're making it because it helps the salt melt. It helps the ice melt, excuse me. So that it makes your ice cream faster. There you go. You're getting your frost and your ice crystals forming. So we have made frost in a jar. Thank you for being here with Science at Free Library Springfield Township. Have a great day.